Here we go with another problem. Here we have another right triangle. One side has a length of 5, another side has a length of 2, and I'm going to ask you to figure out how big this angle is and how big this side is. So try to figure out the questions indicated by the question marks, this side and this angle. If you're having any trouble with these problems, I hope you're making a very conscientious effort to use the notation that I've been demonstrating. Uh, we know that it's helpful to use asterisks to indicate what our initial information was, and we're also going to put an asterisk at this angle. Now, we're not asking this to show that this was given. This angle was not given. The purpose of this asterisk is just to remind us that this is the angle that we're focusing on. Uh, we're not going to focus on this angle down here, because why should we? There weren't any questions about that. We're going to focus on the angle that there was a question asked about. That means that now the vertical side is the adjacent side. If we focus on this angle, the vertical side becomes the adjacent side, and the horizontal side becomes the opposite side. You can see that this horizontal side here is opposite to the angle that they've asked us about. And clearly, this side is the hypotenuse, because it's opposite the 90 degree angle. Let me remind you, just because it popped into my head, let me remind you that all the techniques that we're using only work for right triangles. Just a reminder that everything that we're using here only works for right triangles. You can clearly see that because obviously if this was not a right triangle, it wouldn't even have a hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. Well, if, there, um, is, if it's not a right triangle, there is no right angle. Well, clearly if there's no hypotenuse, you can't use the trig functions. The trig functions are defined in terms of the hypotenuse. And of course you can't use the Pythagorean theorem either. Because the Pythagorean theorem is based on the hypotenuse. So we can only use all of these techniques if we have first drawn a right triangle. This is another problem where we've been given two sides. Uh, well, a good way to find the third side is the Pythagorean theorem. We don't need any trig functions to find this hypotenuse. We can just use the Pythagorean theorem. We don't plug in for the hypotenuse because that's the unknown. But one of the legs here is 5, and the other leg is 2. Now, you can actually work out this whole calculation here on the right side in one step on your calculator. Or maybe you can just do it in your head. These are pretty easy calculations. But um, when you're doing actual homework problems, you'll probably have calculations you can't do in your head. So why don't we try doing this on your calculator just for the practice. So I just want to let you know, you can type this all in in one step on your calculator. You can just type in 5 squared plus 2 squared, and that will give you the right answer uh, if you have a decent scientific calculator. You don't need to, um, to first do 5 squared and then do 2 squared and then add them together. Um, try to get in the habit of doing things in just one step on your calculator when you can. So just type in 5 squared plus 2 squared, and that will give you the right answer. Uh, which is 29, of course. These numbers are simple enough, you could have done that in your head. Now that's not the hypotenuse, it's the hypotenuse squared. Uh, so we're still going to have to figure out what the hypotenuse is. We have to get the hypotenuse by itself, by getting rid of the squaring function. How do we get rid of things? By doing the opposite. What's the opposite of squaring? The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So let's take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of the left hand side, that just gets rid of the square. But we still have to take the square root of the right hand side. Positive square root because we're looking for a length. And then we can use our calculator. The square root of 29 is 5.4. always good to build the information that you figured out into your picture. If we wanted to, we could now use this 5.4 to figure out this angle. But that's not the way it's usually done in physics. Usually in physics, uh, in this type of situation, you don't use your new information to figure out this question. Instead, we should use the two pieces of information we were originally given. That's just the conventional way that this is done. So now that we're going to try to find this angle, we're going to use these two pieces of information we were originally given, the 2 and the 5. Well, it's going to help to give a name to this angle. So let's call this angle theta again. Now, which trig function should we use? Well, we want to use these two pieces of information, the information that we had about the adjacent side and the opposite side. Well, that takes us to the tangent. Only the tangent involves both the opposite and the adjacent sides. You could solve this problem using sine or cosine now, but that's not the way it's usually done. TOA. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. TOA, T 
tangent is opposite over adjacent. The opposite side we've got labeled as 2, and the adjacent side we have labeled as 5. So we have tangent theta equals 2 fifths. If you want to, you can do this calculation now, 2 divided by 5. I'm actually going to postpone that here, though, for a second. Uh, so now I have to figure out theta. Well, I have to figure out theta by getting it by itself. I've got to get rid of the tangent by doing the opposite. What's the opposite of tangent? Well, we've just learned that the mathematicians invented the opposite of tangent. The function they invented to be the opposite of tangent is inverse tangent. Now, if we take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, it just annihilates the tangent, and we're left with theta by itself. But then we have to take the inverse tangent or arc tangent of the right-hand side. And now we have to do this on our calculator. So this is how you would do this on most scientific calculators. Now, of course, if you wanted to, um, you could already have figured out that 2 fifths is 0.4. And you could just plug in 0.4 here. But I'm trying to encourage you to learn how to do things in one step on your calculator. Well, here's how we could do this whole thing in one step. Usually, you have to hit the second key, uh, and then you hit tangent. But because you hit second first, you're going to get the inverse tangent, which is above the tangent key. Now, since we're taking a tangent that involves two terms, we have to put that in parentheses. Otherwise, the calculator won't know that both of these things are in the tangent. So if you're going to have two separate terms in the tangent, you have to use parentheses to tell the calculator um, where you're starting the tangent and where you're ending. So you hit left parentheses, 2 divided by 5, and then right parentheses. This just means 2 divided by 5. So left parentheses, 2 divided by 5, and then right parentheses. Um, some calculators would put this left parentheses in for you, and then you just need the right parentheses. For example, if you're using a TI-83 or a TI-84 calculator, uh, the calculator is already going to put this left parenthesis in for you. So you don't need to put that in. Um, you just put in the right parenthesis. Uh, again, uh, if you have a calculator that's different, you might have to learn how to do this uh, on your own. But most calculators, this would be a good way to take the inverse tangent, I think. Okay, um, and then we got that theta was 22 degrees. If you get second tangent, parenthesis, 2 divided by 5, parenthesis, enter. Obviously, you have to enter when you're done. Your calculator should give you 22 degrees. Uh, if that didn't come out right, uh, then maybe you just have to do this in more than one step. You could do 2 divided by 5, which is 0.4, and then you can just take the inverse tangent of 0.4. Uh, but it is good um, to learn how to take a tangent if you haven't already simplified the fraction. We don't have to simplify this fraction as long as we put it in parentheses. Uh, you can't forget the parentheses, though, when you take the inverse tangent. So this angle was 22 degrees. This was another example of how to solve a problem when you're given two sides.